Oz here and happy holidays to everybody. Now I'm doing something uh, kind of as a favor to Chris Macro at thespreadsheetguru.com. In a previous video, I showed his Christmas expense and budget tracker Excel template for 2015. Pretty cool template. And here's a question that came up from Bob. He wanted another element to the tracker. There, I'm going to put a link in and you can read the exact question. But what it comes down to is... So I find a gift of $150 for sibling A and ask sibling B and C if they would like to share the cost. And we agree $50 each. Then I find a gift for one of our parents and we all share in for $50 each. Finally, sibling A finds a gift for sibling C that I and B share in. So sibling A owes me $50 for gift one plus $50 for gift two and I owe her $50 for gift three. So she owes me a net of $50. So that's the puzzle is the person who found the gift and got others to chip in what is the net owed when it's all said and done? The trick to this is in how you model it. And the starting point is to think about these relationships. So I am going to make this simple and suggest that there are siblings, Denise, Candace, and Todd. Let's move our snowman out of the way. Now we have to think about these relationships. When there's time, when it's time to calculate, money can go in multiple directions. And here is how I can show that to you. In the blue solid arrows, there is Candace to Denise. Candace can pay money to Denise. The black arrow, dashed arrow, says Denise can pay Candace. Candace can pay Todd. Also, Todd can pay Candace. Todd can pay Denise. Denise can also pay Todd. So we've got six possible directions, which is really three double-headed arrows. So I model it this way, from Todd to Denise, from Todd to Candace, from Candace to Denise, okay, and then the opposites. So here we have from Todd to Denise, here's from Denise to Todd. And if it's determined in this example that Todd should pay Denise $115 based on agreements on how they're dividing up payments of gifts. And Denise should pay Todd $30. The net is Todd should pay Denise $85. So how do I get that? I suggest we have a date and then we have who paid. Okay, so if Candace found some socks, doesn't matter the, the price, whether they're $25 socks, $200 socks, doesn't matter. What matters is Todd said, count me in for $24. Todd found wine as a gift for somebody. Candace said, count me in for $25. We have an example of this lamp where Denise found a lamp and Todd is in for $40 and Candace is in for $20.
So the way that I set this up is this way. Let's say Todd, Denise, okay. And now let's get everything where Todd has agreed to chip in where Denise is the one who paid equals some ifs, some what range, some this range, comma, where Todd is the person who's chipping in. So the criteria range would be the chipping in, comma, now click on Todd's name, comma, the criteria range two, where Denise is the person who paid. Great, now let's go over on this side and do this again, where now the roles are reversed. Equals some ifs. This range, criteria one range, where Denise would be the person who chipped in, comma, Denise, comma, the next range, comma, Todd. Todd should pay Denise $115. Denise should pay Todd $30. Okay. How do we make it easy that they don't have to do this math in their head or on some separate sheet of paper? Let's go equals Okay, so we did this value minus this value. Okay, you can imagine that there'll be some negative numbers. Okay, so what we'll do is make this an absolute value because we don't care about the negative numbers. So we're saying that there's a net of $85 but let's make it clear who needs to pay who equals if this is larger than this, then put a U, otherwise leave it empty. Okay, and you'll see why here pretty soon. Equals if this one is larger than this value, then U. Otherwise, leave it empty. So we have a U. Now what we're gonna do is put that in the middle and Change it to a wingdings. All right, so now we know that we're operating on this side of the value, which means Todd has to pay Denise $85. Let's change some numbers here. Let's say that on 9 December 15, Todd found a gift of a leather coat and Denise says, count me in for a hundred dollars. Okay, so now 
this U, which I didn't change the format of, the U needs to be also wingdings, great, and centered. So now we see that the net is $15 and we're on this side. Denise needs to pay Todd the $15 because Todd owes Denise $115 and Denise owes Todd $130. The net is Denise owes Todd $15. So a lot to think about. So there you have it. It's a bit of a mind twister. It took me about a day to think about how to put this together. And then, you know, not even a full hour to start to build it and get it to this point. Uh, but the trick is in the modeling of it. And first starting by understanding these relationships and thinking about how you're going to model these relationships so that you can have a, first of all, dynamic model and something that's easy to read. So I'm gonna get rid of this. And the good thing about this being in a table and everything is integrated, you can just add to the bottom. So if Candace says, hey, that leather coat is for grandma. I want in. How much is left and what can I add to it? All right, so 9 December. Todd is the one who paid. It's leather coat. And Candace is jumping in. And Candace is jumping in with $70. All right, everything updates. Now we're on this side where Candace should pay Todd $105. Let's get over here. Okay, new tires, a gift of new tires. All right. Candace paid it. Todd is in for $200. So if this is all of the gifts, Christmas is over. This diamond tells us we're on this side. Todd owes Candace a balance of $95. Denise owes Todd $15. And Denise owes Candace $20. There you go. So let's bring back this the snowman. All right. Bob, thanks for that question. It was a bit of a mind twister. Appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on to the spreadsheetguru.com and leaving a comment, leaving your question. And thanks to Chris Macro for inviting me to come up with a solution. So happy holidays.